what we would like to do is we would like to introduce you to Nancy Lopez and Maria Cabrera, who is running for council at large. And we were uh, actually like to introduce a new portion of In the Upper Room. We're always trying to bring you something new, something fresh. So what we're going to be doing for the next, I don't know, undetermined period of time is you will be seeing Nancy and Maria on the third Sunday, and they will be reaching out to our Hispanic community. So without further ado, we'd like to welcome them both to the program. Nancy, Maria, thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> yes, thank, thank you. Thank you for coming thank you on. So much. It's an honor. And so what we'd actually like to do is just give you, Nancy, a chance to introduce Maria to those who may not be familiar with her and tell us a little bit about your campaign, yourself, you know, because a lot of times we hear a lot of things from politicians that are, you know, everything we hear from politicians. But what about you? What do you like to do and things like that? But I'll let you take it, Nancy. Thank you very much. Well, uh, thank you again for allowing me to be on this program uh, tonight. And um, Maria, uh, what can I say? I've known Maria for about 10 years. Um, the first time more, I s more. the first time I saw you, I wanted to be like her, look like her, dress like her, all that stuff. <laughs> I think it's and, been 15 years. <laughs> and um, it's really been an up and down time. But you always, what I love about you is the matter. You you've seen the real me, and you still like me. You still keep me around. Or, you know what I mean? But it's it's an honor. Maria Cabrera has. Uh, devoted uh, over 20 years in um, providing service to the public, to the community, to Hispanics, to uh, a diverse group of people, uh, the homeless. Um, she's very dedicated. She's a, a great mother and a great mentor. Um, your accomplishments are, the list goes on and on as to everything that you have done. And I've learned so much about you, about dedication mm -hmm. and preparing to serve, yeah. which I love that too, yeah. by the yeah. way. Yeah. Um, so thank you so much, Maria. And just tell us, I mean, <laughs> we've been <laughs> through so much in the last couple of weeks, yes. I think. Has no been. signs, no time, no money, <laughs> no, <laughs> or yeah. whatever. Money, no signs, no, no time. time. I mean, became really our new slogan for the campaign. No money, no signs, no time. And you and did it, um, and I'm proud of you. Yeah. Well, we did it. We, the community, did it. And I am uh, I'm humbled and I'm so thankful for all of you who went out to vote and who considered me as one of those choices, for people who believed in me. And I have come across so many folks who said they voted for me because someone told them to, for having faith. And I think that faith is very important. Um, as I have said from the beginning, this has been a faith-based campaign. I didn't put myself out to run for office because this is what I wanted to do. If anything, I've been running from office all these years. I did it because I felt that is what God wanted me to do. It was a mission. It was a prophecy from a, a good pastor friend of mine. So it was really his campaign, and I went into it believing it 100%. I never doubted for a minute that I wasn't going to win. So I was like shocked when people kept saying, we didn't think you were going to make it. <laughs> and, you know, and I said, did you not believe in me? I believed in me. I believed that we had a greater mission. And everybody came together, the candidates that I ran with. I just saw such an overwhelming amount of support from my very colleagues that were running in the same race as me. And something that you made very clear um, about how we need to encompass that positive energy, I've already reached out to them. They've reached out to me. I already have a team of the folks that were running in the at-large race uh, that want to be part of the movement because they all had really good ideas and I think their heart was in the right place. And we should channel that energy because when someone goes out to run for office, it takes a lot of guts mm -hmm. and they really have to believe in you, the people. I mean, some folks, not necessarily, but I think that the people that were running this time around, we had some really good choices and it was hard to choose. Um, but I I'm out here as a humble servant right now. I do have two mm -hmm. quick questions. Mm -hmm. uh, two quick questions, uh, Shauna and Mike. We've been mm -hmm. talking about uh, how the Latino community and the African American community we have similar issues, including issues about immigration in the African American community. And so our goal with this program is to educate and to hear from you about those issues. Uh, there's power in numbers. The numbers of Latinos in, the, in Delaware and in Wilmington and the number of uh, African Americans, that would really, uh, you know, allow the, the powers that be to, to see what our issues are and to listen to us, mm -hmm. to really hear us because there is power in numbers. And two, you have your platform that uh, says, uh, and one of them is of your platform is empowering the community. So yes. how do you think yeah. going forward, those two issues that are important to all of us you will plan to do once 
uh, you you know you make it to well first and foremost <laughs> I have always been a, a very proponent of that we need to work together as people of color all people and I have encompassed a, a huge uh, diverse group of people and that includes the Caucasians and the Asians that have come on board to say we need to work together. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times what happens is we need to look at the real issue which is classism and not racism and stop looking beyond the color of our skin right. because when you really look around you find out that there's more things that we have in common than not and that we all pretty much have the same issues in our community. Right. So if we can come together and look at what are the problems and how can we solve them and come up with a positive plan and putting things forward. But I think for too long the community has felt disengage and we need to make you feel like you have the power and that you're engaged and one of the things that I do propose to do and I'm already talking to three folks because I want to have a Caucasian African-American and Hispanic folks that do focus groups and it's probably going to be more of a town hall meeting but we go into each neighborhood into each district because every neighborhood has unique problems right. and that we listen to them we listen to you and what your issues are and we sit down and we make a plan and we address them and you know what I believe that even if we're not able to fix everything or or to address every issue the fact that people get to sit at the table and their voices are heard right. I think that is powerful because we're giving the power back to them yeah. and that's who should have the power I not agree. me I'm just a servant I'm here to serve uh, Maria and um, Nancy Sean I want to jump in and say uh, first of all that is great what you just said and you've been asking and bringing tonight some great points as well um, I ran into Nancy at the polls as I was I was getting ready to vote and she was there she was she was supporting uh, Maria's campaign and Nancy and I go way back we go way back uh, to the mid '80s, right? When we met downtown, roughly. Yeah, I, I, I think I was a teenager. Back yeah, then. yeah, and and yeah. I, had, I had just learned I how to ride a bike. But anyway, um, we we had this energy when we first met. Synergy is is what you can call it. And and as I talked to um, Nancy and and I was telling her, you know, Shauna and I. We, we are both Pisces and we have like minds, you know, we're so Pisces much alike, too. yes, so much alike and, and we can almost speak for each other. And I, I thought that putting together our resources and experience would be good for Wilmington. Right. Um, as you said, because we need to empower people, as Maria was saying, um, and we need to let them know that there is a voice and their voice counts. Yeah. Their votes count and their voices okay. count. Um, and, and I think that Wilmington is definitely ready. Wilmington's ready yep. to have um, a true renaissance and coming together. Yep. Um, as you said, of people of color and continuing to work with our Caucasian, Asian, and anybody else. Mm -hmm. Because exactly. as you said, it's not about the color. I'm gonna tell you what it's really about. It's about the condition. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're in critical condition right yes, now in Delaware and then Wilmington. In Wilmington. We're in critical condition, and we need a healing. We need a healing. And when something heals, what does it do? It comes together. It closes. Okay, I'm done. 